Welcome to the second part of this series on recreating the Stripe homepage with Laravel, SAS, and Vue.js. And today we'll be tackling the header navigation, so let's take a look. When we put our mouse over a link item, you can see the menu sort of swings in and fades in at the same time, and hopefully it's visible on the video. And when you go from one link to another, it slides and scales with the content, and uh, the previous links kind of fade out. So that's what we'll be working on. And the first thing we'll do is open our blade file, and we'll create a nav element and we'll do a container so we can center it and we'll do nav items and we'll create a link called nav item and we'll uh, it'll link nowhere for now and we'll call it products and then we'll do another one and we'll call it developers. So next we'll open our uh, SCSS file and we'll import a second file called nav and we can go ahead and create it now. So nav.scss and we can go here and save and then we can go and start styling it so we'll do nav and we'll give it a position of absolute and top 10 pixels and a width of 100 uh, percent next we'll we'll give it a display of flex so we can center the container and we'll do max width 960 pixels and margin zero auto so it's centered next we'll do nav items and we'll give that a display of flex and that will style the individual items and we'll do uh, display block padding zero pixels and 25 pixels so that's 25 pixels horizontal and height is 50 pixel and line height is the same so that it's centered and we'll do color white and when you hover over it we'll do color RGBA white and 0 0.25 so it's uh, transparent. So if we go back to the browser and we refresh the page, you can see that we have both our links and if we put the mouse over it, they kind of get transparent. So before we continue, we'll take another look at the Stripe homepage and identify the parts that we need. So we have this white background that slides and resizes as you move around. We have this arrow here that also slides around and then we have the links content. So we'll go back to the editor and we open our blade file and at the bottom below the container we'll do a drop down and we'll have our background element and we'll have we need an arrow we said so we'll do arrow then we have our links content so we'll have two link group and inside of it we'll include uh, some content that I have already prepared so products and the second one will be uh, developers and if we go to our SCSS file I already have some styles prepared so if we go back to the browser and refresh the page you can see that we have our link content styled but now we need to style the actual drop down so back to our SCSS file we'll go below the knife item and we'll do drop down and we'll give it a position of absolute a top of 50 pixels and now to get this kind of swinging effect, we'll use transform and we'll use rotate X minus 15 degrees. And for this to work, we need to actually go back to the container, which is the nav and give it a perspective of 2000 pixels. So we'll go back here. And now because we want the swinging to happen from the top, we'll do transform origin and we'll do 50% and minus 50 pixels. So the origin is a little bit above uh, the container and next we'll give it an opacity of zero and because we want all this to get animated we'll do transition uh, all 0.5 seconds so stripe uses 0.25 seconds but i'll be using 0.5 uh, just to make sure it comes up on the video and now when the drop down is active we want to have transform uh, rotate x to be zero degrees and we want the opacity to be one so next we'll go right below and we'll do background and we'll do position absolute and width 380 pixels and a, and a height of 365 pixels. We'll do background white. So as a quick reminder, the background is the part that you can actually see resizing and sliding around. And so it also has a box shadow and I will simply paste it in like this and a border radius of four pixels and because we want it to be animated we'll do transition all 0.5 seconds next we'll style the arrow so we'll do arrow 
and position is also absolute. The width is 12 pixels, the height is 12 pixels, the background is white, so it's a white square, and later we'll rotate it 45 degrees with JavaScript. But for now, we'll just do border top left radius is four pixels, and transition all 0.5 seconds. And because we only want the top to stick out, we'll do a minus six pixel for the top. Next, we'll do our links and we'll do position relative and the width is going to be 300 pixels. The height is going to be 365 pixels. The overflow is going to be hidden and transition all 0.5 seconds. Finally, we'll do link group and we'll do position absolute, padding 25 pixels and transition all 0.5 seconds. So next, if we go back to the browser and we refresh the page, you can see that the drop down is now hidden. So we'll go back to the editor and we'll open our blade file and we'll start adding some Vue.js to open and close our drop down. So we'll go to the nav item and we'll do mouse over is equal to open drop down and we'll pass in which one. So it's products here and we'll do mouse leave is equal to close drop down. So we'll copy this right there and we'll paste it in for developers and we'll change products to developers. So next we'll open our app.js file and we'll do data and it's going to return an object and this is for our navigation. So we need to know two things. We need to know if it's open and it's going to be false by default and we need to know which panel is active. So we'll do products by default. Next we'll create our methods. So the first one is open drop down and it accepts a nav item and it's going to be this.nav.open is equal to true and this.nav.active is equal to nav item. So next we'll do close drop down and we'll do this.nav.open is equal to false. So next we'll go back to our blade file and under drop down here we'll do a dynamic class and it's going to be active and nav.open. So if the nav is open, the drop down is going to have a class of active. So if we save and we go back to the browser and refresh the page, when we mouse over the nav links, you can see that our drop down fades in and swings in like we want. However, we still need to fix the positioning. And to do that, we'll need two informations. We'll need to know how far from the left edge of the screen each of these nav links is. And we'll also need to know how wide our content is for each of these panels. And with that, we'll create a dynamic style that will apply to our dropdown. So let's go back to the editor and open our app.js file. And here we'll do links. And we'll need to know uh, the information of our product. So it's going to be left. For now, we'll put zero before we can calculate it. And the width is going to be set at 368. So next, we'll do uh, our developers drop down and the left is going to be zero for now as well and the width is going to be set at 422. So next we'll go down here and we'll use the mounted lifecycle hook. So first we'll calculate the left position of the products drop down. So we'll do this dot nav dot links dot products dot left is equal to this dot well now we need a way to reference the products link so we'll go to our blade file and we'll do ref is equal to pro products link like this and we'll do here ref is equal to developers link and we'll save and go back here so we can now do refs dot products link dot get bounding client rect and we'll use the left property and then we'll add this dot refs dot products link again dot offset with divided by two so this gives us the left edge of the link and this uh, adds half of its width. So essentially, uh, this is now the middle of the uh, products link. So if we go back to the browser, this is here, this position. So we'll do the same uh, here. We'll copy this and we'll paste it in and we'll just uh, replace uh, products with developers for the second link just like this, so we save, and if we go back to the browser and refresh the page, if we open our view DevTools, you can see here that we have 
um, our left position and we have our left position for the products as well. So we can close this and go back to the editor and we'll open our blade file and here we'll give it, uh, we'll give the background a dynamic style and we'll start with transform and we'll use a computed property called position transform and we'll also give it a width and for this we'll use nav.links and we'll get the active nav and we'll get the width and we will add pixels like this so then we'll copy this from the background and it's going to be the same for the links like this and then we'll do uh, for our arrow we'll also have a dynamic style and we'll do transform and it's going to be arrow transform so we'll save and we'll open our app.js and here we'll use computed properties and the first one will be position transform and we'll do left is equal to this dot nav dot links and we'll get the active one and we'll grab the left position and we'll subtract this dot nav dot links and once again we'll get the active one and we'll get the width and divide it by two so next we'll return and we'll do uh, translate x and we'll get our left position with pixels so the first part here will position the left edge of the drop down in the middle of the link and to center it we will subtract half of the width of the drop down so that gives us a center drop down so next we'll do um, the arrow transform which is very similar and we'll do left is equal to this dot nav dot links and once again the active one dot left and we'll subtract six and here we'll return uh, translate x and we'll do left pixels and we'll also give it a rotate of 45 degrees like we mentioned earlier so if we save and we refresh the browser here uh, you can see that we have our drop down that is well positioned however our content is now overlapping so let's go back to the editor and we'll open our blade file and we need to give our link group some styling so first we'll use a dynamic style to set the width so we'll do nav.links.products.width plus pixels and we need to give them a class when they're not selected to style them so we'll do class and we'll do left and nav.active is not equal to products so if the active nav is not products this link group will get a class of left so next we'll copy this uh, like this and we'll use it in the other link group and we just need to change products to developers and we need to change left to right so next we'll open our nav.scss file and we'll add our uh, class modifiers so we'll do transform translate x minus 150 pixels and the opacity is zero and we'll do the right one so we'll do right and transform translate x 150 pixels this time and the opacity is also zero so if we go back to the browser and refresh you can see that the navigation is now working as expected except that when we try to mouse over it it disappears so we'll go back to the editor and we'll open our blade file and here we will do uh, mouse over is equal to keep drop down open and mouse leave is equal to close drop down so we'll open app.js and we'll add a new method and it's going to be keep drop down open and to know if it's open or not we'll check the opacity so we'll do um, opacity is equal to get computed style and now we need a way to reference a drop down so we'll do uh, ref is equal to drop down so we will do refs dot drop down dot get property value and we'll grab the opacity and if the opacity is bigger than zero this dot nav dot open is going to be equal to true so if we go back to the browser and refresh one last time you can see that the navigation now works and we can 
mouse over it properly. So this will conclude today's video. If you've enjoyed it, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel so you don't miss the next video. Thank you for watching.